In this video, I'm going to talk about solving percent problems by using a proportion method. Now, there are many ways to do this, but I'm going to use this idea of ratios equal to each other, which is a proportion. So, and my one ratio is going to be is over of. So what that means is when I read my sentence, there's going to be a number that's associated with the word is, and there's going to be a number that's associated with the word of. So I'm going to put them in their placeholders. And I'm going to set that equal to the percent that we have over 100. Because remember, percent means part of 100, so it's in terms of 100. So I'm just going to put that over my 100. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We have three placeholders for values, is, of, and percent. So the first one I'm going to look for is my percent. So my example here says 30 is what percent of 50? So I don't see a percent sign on any of my numbers, but in fact, I see what percent. So that means my percent is my unknown value. So as I take this kind of template for my proportion, my percent here, I don't know what it is. So I'm going to put a P in its spot for percent, and I know that's what I'm solving for. And my 100 right here always goes there, because it's a percent uh, part of 100 right here, this relationship. So that means I'm looking for numbers to fill in for my is, and my of. So let's look at this statement. 30 is, oh, right there's my word is, and 30 is right next to it. Right, so I'm going to put 30 is, so my is is going to be 30, and what percent of 50? So here's my of, and there's my 50. So again, as we're kind of setting this proportion up, we're looking for a number that's is on top and of on bottom. Because the idea is 30 is what percent of 50? So we're looking for really 30 out of 50. So I say 30 out of 50, the same way that some percent is out of 100. Now that I have my proportion set up, I can use cross products and set them equal to each other. So beside it here, I'll say 50 times P will be 50P equals 30 times 100. But 30 times 100 just means 30 with a couple more zeros behind there. And in order to solve this now for my percent, I'm going to divide both sides by 50. So my percent now equals 3,000 divided by 50, which will actually be 60. And uh, one last thing I have to do, I know that my P stands for a percent, because that's what I was looking for, what percent. So I need to put a percent symbol behind here. Now, I don't need to worry about uh, taking a decimal or a percent or, you know, converting something because this is already over a percent over 100. So it's already parts of 100, so it's already in a percent form. So there's no translation of where does my decimal go or do I shift it two places over some direction? We're okay just the way we are because my P is my percent already. And when I solve for P, I got 60 in this case, and I can just put my percent symbol with it. In my second example, I see the question, 75% of 44 is what number? Right, so we're focusing on our proportion method for solving these percent problems. So I have is over of equals some percent over 100. So uh, in the previous example, I said the first thing you want to do is look for your percent and just put that percent in there. So in our case, we have 75%. So I'm going to say 75 over 100. And remember, when we're doing this proportion method, I don't need to worry about changing my percent to a decimal or decimal two percents. I can just use it just the way it is because it's 75 percent, but percent means parts of 100. So 75 over 100 is actually what that means. So I can leave it just like this. And it's going to equal my is on top and my of on bottom. Well, when I look at my only other number that I have, 44, it's kind of got an of and an is like right next to a both of them. But let's look at this in a larger context. We have of 44 is what number? So as we read this from left to right, the of is going to take this 44 because of is my first word because we're not, we've already dealt with our percent. So of 44, so we know those go together. And then is what number? So is what number? So we're saying that our is is our what number? We don't know what that is. So I'll put an in for a number and then of 44 will go on bottom just like that. So I can solve this using my cross products again. So I'm going to come through here and solve just like that. So when I do this, it'll be 100 times n, 
will be 100 in equals, and I have 44 times 75. I know that's going to be 3,300. Okay, so now when I divide both sides by 100 to isolate my n, it looks like my n will equal 3,300 divided by 100. Well, those zeros are just going to cancel out. So I'm going to have 33 for my number. So let's think again for a moment at the first example that I did. I'm going to shuffle back up here. So I used a p for percent because that was my missing value. And down here in this example, I used an n for my missing value. So I would encourage you, if you're missing an is or an of, you know those are just going to be numbers, so I would use n's. But if I'm missing the percent, I would use a p. That way, when I finish and I solve my problem, I have a p right there, and I kind of know that I need to put a percent symbol along with it because that stands for percent. In this third and final example, we have the question, 62 is 124% of what number? Well, I know sometimes when we see these percents that are over 100, we get a little confused. All we're saying is that the relationship between 62 and whatever number we're looking for is that 62 is going to be 124% of it, so it just means 62 is going to be bigger than some original number since we have more than 100% of it. Okay, so when we look to solve this using our proportion method, we have is over of equals our percent over 100. So kind of what I was encouraging you to do is put your percent in there first over 100 and kind of get that out of the way, and then we can worry about what our numbers for is and of are. Okay, so I know my percent is 124%, so I'm just going to put my 124 right there over my 100. And again, since it's a percent and it's over 100, I don't need to worry about, um, you know, moving the decimal place or trying to make this into a decimal or something like that. So 124 over 100 represents 124%. Okay, so then I need my is number over my of number. So it looks like 62 is and of what number? So it looks like my 62 is my is, and that's going to go on top, which leaves my of what number to be my unknown. So I'll put my n right there. And now again, I can use cross products. So I'm going to have 124n, okay, and that's going to equal this right here, which is 6200, okay? So when I divide both sides by this 124, Okay, I'll notice that it'll cancel over here, it'll isolate my n, and 6200 divided by 124 is just going to be 50. Okay, so I know my number in this case is 50, so I'm saying that 62 is 124% of 50. So I've been using my proportion method here, and it's going to be is over of equals some percent over 100, and that's going to help us to solve these equations when we check out the parts themselves, the percent, and maybe what number goes with is, and what number is associated with of. And then we can solve my proportions just by doing cross products here.